Hey YouTube, today is February 4th of 2020. My name is Chris, the name of this channel is City Prepping, and on this channel we discuss uh, preparing for emergencies, pandemic, whether it's natural or man-made events, and obviously with the Wuhan coronavirus continuing to escalate and grow within mainland China and now beginning to show up in other developing, or rather in other nations, uh, obviously a lot of people are very concerned. Um, if you've watched the last two videos that I've done that has talked about the you know, coronavirus, my position then is very similar to what it is today. Uh, I'm not worried that it's going to become some major issue, but I am very concerned that it has a potential to do so. Obviously, there's a difference between what's probable and what's possible. I think at the moment, the probability of this blowing up and growing out of control within the mainland U.S. Um, I think is very low. I think we will potentially within this month see pockets of it pop up within cities, but hopefully it will be quarantined. Um, I don't really gamble much, but when I do, I always like to go with things that have a higher odds in my favor. And I, I look at this particular situation right now as it stands, and I'm just not seeing, at least within the United States, that there's going to be what I, what, I, what I believe to be a really strong possibility that this is going to grow out of control. But again, the only caveat in, that, in saying that is that at the moment, there's not a lot that we know about the coronavirus. There's still what I believe at least is not enough information coming out of China to really draw strong conclusions. And as I've been studying this and watching a lot in the scientific community, there, are, there is a lot of frustration that we're just not getting a lot of details out of China, especially uh, after someone passes, being able to do any kind of autopsies or you know, uh, analyzing uh, things after that. So it's still, I think, at a point where uh, there's just not a strong body of evidence to point toward you know it, it growing out of control in the United States, but yet there's not enough, in my opinion, evidence that um, you know shows that this is just a, a, a closed case. Obviously, it continues to grow. Today, as far as the information that we're being told from China is that it, there's around 21,000 infected with a little over 400 dead. Um, I'd be willing to wager that that number, you could probably easily multiply that times four. And again, for various reasons, uh, obviously, the way the Chinese government maintains and controls their information. And also, you know, I begin to study this online, the way physicians in China actually document when someone passes, the cause of death is not always the thing that led up to it, but rather the end result. For example, someone died of pneumonia that was obviously, you know, caused by the coronavirus. They may simply label it as pneumonia, that's it, it's done, and they move on. So it's hard to know exactly and again, that's just the way they do it in China. I'm not saying that's right or wrong. And so that's why, while I'm optimistic that we're not seeing a major issue, again, outside of China, within China, it's hard to know exactly what's happening. So on that note, what I'd like to do in this video is kind of run through some of the main points of uh, good news, bad news, what, what I think is going to be happening next based on what I'm seeing, based on what I'm studying. And really some advice if you're not really sure what you should begin to do to prepare for this particular situation. And I'll talk about that a little more in the video. So let's go ahead and jump in. We'll go point by point. So again, as we just discussed, what we know today, and again, this is information that's being given to us, is that um, roughly around 21,000 um, you know, infected within China with about a little over 400 uh, actually having died. Uh, again, we're starting to see you know, little cases here and there in other countries where it's beginning to pop up. Um, I believe in the United States, there's around 11 confirmed cases. Again, that's a pretty small number. Right up the road from where I live, about 20 minutes, is the March Airfield base where the flight that came from China, where they actually quarantined, uh, I believe, a little over 200 people that were on that plane. So that's literally right up the road from me. So this is kind of hitting close, uh, close to where I live, uh, quite, you know, quite literally. So beyond that, um, as we look around and what we're seeing around the world, for me, the only thing that's making me optimistic is that we're not seeing a huge explosion yet of um, particular incidents where it's getting out of control. As I expressed in the last video that I talked about, my one primary concern is India. And the reason I say that is because, again, they're a neighboring country to China. They're a developing nation. They don't have a, how should I say it, a very advanced medical system simply because of their financial status or rather where they're at. And the reality is if it does begin to blossom and grow there and get out of control, uh, I think that's where I would become a little more concerned. As of today, I'm, I'm still very optimistic, but that's one thing I'm definitely keeping an eye on. There have been a few cases there, but nothing that on the level, obviously, of China. 
And again, the good news right now is I would see it um, is that there's not any major spreads outside of China again. I, I don't even know if it's over much over 100 so far of documented cases outside the United, or outside of China. Um, there's no deaths in the United States. There has been a person-to-person -person transmission. It was a married couple, so go figure on that. But beyond that, we're not seeing major, as of today, we're not seeing major cases where a spreader shows up at a mall or some other event and then everybody gets infected. We're just fortunately not seeing that. Uh, if we do begin to see that, then we have a different issue that we're going to have to deal with. Um, again, no major outbreaks in the United States. I did, and I know this is an anecdotal uh, argument, but when I look at, you know, talking to people in the medical community, I've never asked anybody that I've talked to to come onto the channel or disclose their name, obviously, because, you know, they have to be careful what they say. But uh, a very good friend of mine is a physician. He's an older gentleman, very level-headed, uh, definitely not an alarmist. I wouldn't, uh, you know, consider him that by any means. But as we spoke the other day, um, while he is optimistic that this will not grow out of control in the United States, he is still very concerned and watching it closely. Uh, so I think after I spoke with him, I was, <laughs> I was probably not as optimistic as I have been before simply because I see somebody that, again, is what I would consider a very level-headed individual expressing concern. So all that to say, I still see this as uh, not something that I'm overly worried about, but yet I'm some, something I'm watching very closely nonetheless. So what's the bad news? Obviously, it's still spreading in China. Um, they're in their Chinese New Year. It's basically, imagine if you were to take the American Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year and cram them together in a two-week period uh, where families are getting together, people are traveling. So it's a time right now where you're seeing this continuing to grow and expand these uh, you know, incidents. You've got a large population that, unfortunately, at this moment is being quarantined. But uh, again, it's, it's a really odd time for this to be happening in China. Uh, you know, again, based on the, the holiday season and how people are traveling and spreading this. The other big issue is that it's a novel virus. A novel virus is a new virus that hasn't been seen before. It, it, there's no real vaccines or treatment. There's not a lot known. So a lot of times when I hear people on their channels or you know, in different places say, well, it's not a big deal. You know, look at influenza, look at the flu. It kills 20, 30,000 people every year, and it does. And obviously, in comparison, this is not even, you know, again, we haven't even seen deaths yet in the United States because of this. So it is something I think people should obviously be more concerned at this point about, you know, the typical things like the flu. You know, I get my flu shot every year. Uh, thankfully, you know, we haven't gotten sick as a family, but it's one of those things where as of right now, it hasn't been as damaging uh, to our economy or to our population as a typical flu, but it's a novel virus. Again, meaning that there's just, you know, not enough known to actually predict how it will, will move, how it will behave, so to speak. So they're still unknowns, and that's problematic, again, when you look at that compared to a known illness that they can treat in advance and then be prepared for. Uh, it still can mutate. That's one of the other concerns I have is, again, it is a virus. It's an RNA virus, so that means it can, it can go sideways. It can change. It can morph, and that's what, uh, obviously, viruses do. They get into a host. They find a way to grow and expand, and mutation is inevitable. So that's one of the things, again, that still concerns me about this particular virus. Um, and the other issue is it's going to take time to create a vaccine for this. China, obviously, is probably racing the clock right now to create something to actually try to put this, uh, you know, try to get ahead of this. And because there's no vaccines ready, uh, there's not a lot that can be done. So those are the concerns that I have at this point. Again, I'm optimistic that we haven't seen many cases in the United States. But again, time will tell. Uh, but again, I appreciate the fact that we are... Uh, our government has stepped forward. The Trump administration has declared this an emergency. They're taking protocols and taking action, rather, to actually try to nip this in the bud before it becomes an issue. <clears throat> if you want to really know my number one concern, my number one concern is how people are going to react, the panicking. Um, you know, if, if you go to Google Trends and look at the coronavirus, it was up really high last week, and then it's coming back down. So I, I, for that, I'm happy that people are beginning to I, I feel like beginning to take a level-headed approach and look at this and not freak out. Um, obviously, I think if we see pockets and major cities start having this, I think that might change. But as of today, uh, it seems like people are beginning to kind of calm down on this. Obviously, the mainstream media doesn't help. They create a lot of articles that you know kind of hype the fear because it gets you clicking on their articles and they get more ad revenue off that. So that's, I think, at my point, 
the thing that would worry me most about this is how people will react if this does grow or escalate in the United States, which kind of leads me to my next point of what you should begin to do now. Uh, is there any action that you should take? Um, well, you know, again, I've had a lot of uh, physicians talk to a lot of people in the comments section, give great advice, and it's simple. Wash your hands. Try to avoid touching your face, which is difficult. Um, try to do some of the basic things. Again, observe what's going on around you. If there's people sneezing, try to avoid being around that. Uh, I'm hearing different things as far as, you know, a lot of people wearing the surgical masks that really don't do a lot. N95s are better. Uh, again, I've got gear that I have for my family. I've got CBRN. Uh, chemical biological radioactive nuclear mask for both adults and my children. Uh, I am order, ordering more gear from the company that I work with. Uh, again, I'll post a link in the description in the cards, or rather in the uh, comment section below for the gear that I'm personally, uh, that I've had an inventory of before this happened and uh, that I am actually in the process of buying more from. Do I think these are overkill? Absolutely. These are really beyond what most people would even need. Uh, if a situation were to escalate, would I be glad that I had these? Yeah, probably. But at the end of the day, um, I think, you know, having a, a basic N95 mask that has a tight, uh, you know, surface, I think that's at least a good start for now. Um, what else? You know, having emergency or rather having an extra couple of weeks of food on hand. Uh, most people have enough food, really, if you're honest, you know, for three days, maybe a week in their cupboards. Uh, I did do a video a while back, how to prepare a two-month emer emergency food supply. I'll post a link in the cards up above if you want to check that out. I believe it's two weeks or two months. Either way, the principles are the same if it is two weeks. You can just take that and multiply what I, what I talk about. In the video, really what I discuss is just some basic, simple, staple foods that's good to have on hand. Because if there is an outbreak, an epidemic, if this does spread, uh, having the ability to stay in your house for a couple of weeks until things kind of blow over, uh, it's going to be important. A lot of people, I, I just don't even think, are prepared to even stay in their house more than you know one week at most. So I think at least at a bare minimum, have a little extra food on hand. Go to Costco, go to Sam's Club, go to Walmart, somewhere where you can get a, a good amount of bulk food. Um, and I don't think, again, there's anything wrong with that. If it's you know this turns out to be nothing and this passes, well, you can obviously eat to that food in time and there was no money wasted. So um, that is, I, I definitely recommend at this point of where we are in this whole situation, have at a minimum a couple of you know weeks, a month, maybe two months worth of food uh, supply on hand. Uh, on this channel, we discuss emergency preparedness. I advocate usually six months to a year's worth of food on hand for those that really wanna get serious, but I think a couple of months at this point will do you pretty good. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, what do I think is going to be coming next? Um, I think the next two to four weeks are going to be critical. How things uh, pan out with this virus, whether it kind of pitters out, uh, whether it spreads to other nations, whether it comes to the United States, I think we'll know within the next month. Uh, the good news is, again, a lot of this is being contained to China, but all it takes is for a spreader to get across a border somehow through a boat, a plane, walking across, driving, uh, getting it into a large population and taking off from there. Uh, that is my concern as of today, but we haven't really seen that happen in mass yet. Uh, but again, hopefully it doesn't come down to that. If you have any feedback, any thoughts, any questions, please post that in the comment section below. I uh, always enjoy getting feedback from the community. Uh, really, at the end of the day, I hope after watching this video, you walk away knowing that there are some, you know, some basic things that you can do that you don't really need to be in a place where you're alarmed or in fear. I don't think it's gotten to that point. Um, I'm trying to keep a level head about it. And I think really at the end of the day, we're going to look back at this as an event that it could have been a wake up call for a lot of people that, again, it's unfortunate that people have died. And I don't want to uh, play that down or, or uh, neglect pointing that out. But I think uh, a lot of times it's easy to look at this and, and, you know, if it blows by, I know in America we kind of have a short attention span sometimes. Uh, we forget things that just happened six months ago. Um, but I, a lot of articles and things I've read for people that have been in, you know, epidemiologists, a lot of them haven't seen the actions that we're taking now in 50 years. Um, so it's definitely a time where, again, people are beginning to realize things like this can get out of control very quickly. Uh, as much as we have modern conveniences, we think technology is at a point where, you know, we don't have to worry about things. Uh, that's not always the case. There is a special or rather a new show that came out, I think, on January 7th on Netflix. It's called Pandemic. I've been watching that here recently. 
It's not uh, your exciting, fun, you know, full of hype. It's pretty basic, but it shows how these diseases do play out, and it's definitely worth a watch. Um, it's it's sobering, especially in light of everything that's happening right now. So again, uh, if you enjoy this video, click on the like button, share on social media. Again, post your comments in the comment section below. And again, I'll put a link to the gear that I'm actually, uh, I've got in my inventory that I'm going to be purchasing more of um, as I'm watching this pretty closely over the next few weeks. As always, be safe out there.